Hey everyone, you know landscape architecture is a multifaceted discipline? It blends art and ecology and human needs to create outdoor spaces that are both functional and beautiful. So today, we're counting down the top 15 most incredible landscape architectural styles. Starting with number 15, the jewel at the Chengai Airport, Singapore. Now, airports tend to be monotonous concrete landscapes that focus on functionality at the cost of comfort, but the Chengai Airport in Singapore takes a completely different approach. In April of 2019, the Jewel opened, which is described as a nature-themed entertainment and retail complex that connects Terminals 1, 2, and 3. And it's a stunning blend of nature and architecture. Set within a glass and steel dome, it's now even become a visitor attraction in its own right, attracting people from all over the world. The most impressive part of the Jewel is the Rain Vortex. It's the world's tallest indoor waterfall, which plunges more than 130 feet or 40 meters down into the basement. This central feature is surrounded by the Shiseido Forest Valley, an indoor garden spread across five stories, where you'll find walking trails that twist and turn among the more than 2,000 trees and over 100,000 shrubs from across the world. Beyond the natural wonders, the Jewel features more than 280 shops and eateries, of course, with options ranging from luxury brands to local specialties, and from high-end dining to casual eateries. The Canopy Park, which is at the top level, features further nature-themed attractions including the Canopy Bridge, Sky Nets, Hedge Maze, and Mirror Maze, meaning there's plenty to do while waiting for your flight. Number 14. Bacalar Eco Park, Mexico the Bacalar Eco Park in Mexico is a stunning region that's located near the town of Bacalar in the state of Quintana Roo. This eco park is located along the shores of Laguna Bacalar, known for its crystal clear waters and striking shades of blue, and it's a place that's rich in biodiversity. The park itself is dedicated to preserving this valuable natural environment and promoting awareness about ecological practices among visitors. It encompasses a diverse ecosystem, including mangroves, tropical forests, and freshwater cenotes, providing habitats for a wide variety of wildlife. Across the site, there have been a number of developments, but one in particular has been celebrated around the world since it was completed in 2023. What initially looks like a wooden square that's been dropped on the landscape is, in fact, a clever structure that allows visitors and researchers to explore the environment without having any impact on it. Built at a height to avoid touching the mangroves or the trees and built with responsibly sourced wood from close by, it's a perfect example of how we can enjoy nature in a respectful way that preserves it for the future. Number 13. The Treetop Walk Hammeren Activity Park in Norway this activity park in Norway is an amazing destination for nature enthusiasts and adventure seekers alike that's situated in the heart of Norway's breathtaking landscape. Built in the forest alongside Lake Fyrsvatten, it's two-thirds of a mile or about a kilometer long plank boardwalk that's held up by pillars and it journeys from the forest floor up through the canopy and along a mountain ridge to the summit of a nearby mountain. Once you're there, you're able to climb up into a circular viewpoint and take in the unobstructed views across the forest countless lakes and unusual rock formations, which is an incredible way to see Norway's scenery. Designed to follow the curvature of the mountain and in doing so create a number of scenic vantage points along the route, the designers behind the boardwalk wanted to encourage more people to visit the area, but in a way that causes minimal damage to the environment. Everything is made from locally sourced pine wood, which are turned into small prefab elements that could be combined on site without the need for large tools or disruptions. It has been done in such a free-flowing and considerate way that you could almost believe that the wooden pathway had formed there naturally, and crucially, it has a minimal impact on the forest floor. This approach, providing roots for humans without affecting delicate ecosystems, is vital in preserving natural wonders like these, and it's likely it'll act as a blueprint for similar developments elsewhere in the world. Number 12. The High Line in New York so cities around the world are full of structures that are no longer used, and in many cases, they simply are left to rust away. In New York City, though, there's a great example of innovative urban renewal and landscape architecture that turns a defunct piece of infrastructure into a celebrated public space. Originally a freight rail line elevated above the streets of Manhattan's west side, the High Line has been transformed into a one and a half mile long aerial greenway that stretches from the Meatpacking District up to West 34th Street, near to the Javits Center. This transformation, completed in several phases with the first section opening in 2009, has redefined the concept of a city park, blending art, nature, and design in a way that offers a peaceful retreat from the urban bustle. 
covered with a mix of wildflowers, grasses, shrubs, and trees, many of which are native species. This careful selection of vegetation is designed to be self-sustaining and provides a habitat for urban wildlife. The park's design makes use of the original railroad tracks, reminding visitors of its industrial past, and features contemporary art installations, performances, and social events throughout the year, making it a cultural hub. The layout of the High Line encourages leisurely walks with plenty of seating areas, viewing platforms, and glass railings along the sides. It's a popular spot for tourists and locals, providing a unique perspective on New York City, away from the typical street-level chaos. And it's also spurred redevelopment in the surrounding neighborhoods, becoming a catalyst for new residential and commercial projects that blend in with the High Line's aesthetic. Number 11. Thammasat University, Thailand Thammasat University in Thailand is a lesson in innovative design and sustainability, particularly its Rangsit campus, which has received international acclaim for its eco-friendly architecture. This campus shows how modern educational facilities can work in hand with nature, emphasizing environmental responsibility. The thing that stands out the most about this university's design is its vast rooftop farm, which is one of the largest of its kind in Asia. This green rooftop spans more than 75,000 square feet or over 7,000 square meters, and it's modeled after traditional Thai rice terraces. The design not only pays homage to the Thai cultural heritage, but also serves practical purposes too, such as reducing rainwater runoff, enhancing biodiversity, and reducing the urban heat island effect. The buildings of the wider university incorporate a variety of eco-friendly features too, designed to minimize environmental impact. They use, for example, natural vegetation and lighting to reduce energy consumption, while solar panels generate renewable energy. When creating the plans for the university buildings, it was seen as vital that future-facing concepts were incorporated in a place where future generations go to study. It's hoped that this architectural style will inspire students, who will then take the ideas and implement them into the wider world. Number 10. Parque Gel, Barcelona, Spain Parque Gel is one of the most iconic and visually stunning public parks in the world. Designed by the renowned Catalan architect Antonio Gaudi with his unique approach to modernist architecture, it combines natural forms, vibrant colors, and intricate textures to create a space that feels both whimsical and deeply rooted in the natural world. Commissioned by Wesebi Gel in the early 20th century as part of a residential development project, the park was never completed as intended but was instead opened to the public in 1926, a few years after Gel's death. In 1984, UNESCO declared the park a World Heritage Site, recognizing its significance. The park is spread over 17 hectares and it's located on the side of Carmel Hill, with magnificent views of the city of Barcelona and the Mediterranean. Its layout is a complex network of pathways, steps, and plazas interspersed with lush gardens, sculptural elements, and architectural marvels, such as the main terrace, surrounded by a long undulating bench covered in colorful mosaic tiles. The bench is not only a work of art, but also a social space where visitors can sit and enjoy the views. Gaudi's use of mosaics made from broken tile shards can be seen throughout the park, adding splashes of color to various surfaces, from sculptures to buildings. The park's two gatehouses, designed to look like gingerbread houses, and the serpentine dragon staircase at the entrance are typical of Gaudi's imaginative and innovative style, and a unique and unusual addition to a public park. With Gaudi's work visible across Barcelona, the park acts as a focal point for his contribution to the city and attracts millions of people each year, showing just how powerful architectural techniques can be in bringing communities together. Number 9. Namba Parks, Osaka, Japan Namba Parks, which is in the bustling Namba district of Osaka, Japan, is a clever example of urban redevelopment and architectural innovation that integrates nature into a commercial complex. The multi-purpose development, which was completed in 2003, was designed to bring a slice of nature to the urban landscape and aimed to soften the concrete jungle that covers most of Osaka. Standing on the former site of Osaka Stadium, it was designed by the architectural firm Yerde Partnership, and it's an eight-level office and shopping complex that features a huge rooftop garden that spans several acres. The garden is the centerpiece of the development, cascading down the building in a series of terraces that replicate the natural curves of a mountain landscape. These terraces are meticulously landscaped with trees, shrubs, lawns, and streams, and they create a space of calm and peace. It's not just for aesthetics, though, as this design also helps regulate the building's temperature and therefore reduces its energy consumption. The rooftop garden is accessible to the public and offers walking paths, seating areas, and spectacular views of the city. 
The lower levels of the complex take on a modern design with curved organic forms that emulate natural landscapes. And inside is no different either. There's a wide variety of retail shops, restaurants, cafes, and entertainment venues. But designed with open spaces, natural light, and greenery, it helps blur the lines between indoor and outdoor environments. Number 8. Parc André Citroën, France Parc André Citroën, which can be found in Paris, France, is a contemporary public park that was opened in 1992 on the site of a former Citroën automobile manufacturing plant. It covers an area of around 35 acres. This park distinguishes itself from the traditional French gardens with its innovative design. Designed by landscape architects Gilles Clement and Alain Provost, along with architects Patrick Berger, Jean-Francois Jodry, and Jean-Paul Viguerre. The park is divided into three major areas, a central park, a themed garden, and a large greenhouse. The central green space has a wide open lawn and geometrical layout, offering a vast area for relaxation and play. Surrounding this central area, smaller themed gardens, each designed with a unique set of plants, colors, and architectural elements, represent different moods and experiences, and which are named after metals, and reflect the contrast between the movement and stillness, shade and light, and creating a rich blend of color and sensory experiences. At the center of the park are two large greenhouses which contain a collection of exotic plants and serve as a reminder of the industrial past of the site. And for those looking for a unique perspective of the city, there's also a tethered helium balloon operated by Balloon de Paris, which offers breathtaking aerial views. When it opened, the park was the largest new park in France for more than a century and soon became a leading example of how industrial sites, rather than being left to deteriorate, can be redeveloped as green spaces to benefit the wider community. Moving on to number 7, Ibirapuera Park, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Ibirapuera Park, which is in Brazil, is the city's largest green space, but it's far more than that. It's also become a vibrant cultural hub, combining leisure, architecture, and art in a sprawling urban oasis. Opened in 1954 to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the city, the park was designed by landscape architect Roberto Burle Marx, with buildings by the renowned Brazilian architect Oscar Niemeyer. Covering an area of about 390 acres, it's often likened to Central Park in New York City, and it offers a similar ability for residents to get some much-needed respite from the city's bustling urban environment. This park features a series of interconnected lakes, wide pedestrian walkways, bicycle tracks, and lush landscaped areas filled with native Brazilian vegetation. It's also a cultural epicenter, hosting various different spaces that are dedicated to art, music, and education, and amongst its most famous attractions are the Museum of Modern Art, the Museum of Contemporary Art, and the Afro-Brazil Museum, each of which houses large collections that span several genres. The buildings in the park were carefully designed to blend seamlessly with the surrounding landscape, and the most iconic among them is the Oca, a white dome-shaped exhibition space that resembles an indigenous Brazilian hut. Another focal structure is the Auditorio Ibirapuera, which is a music venue that's known for its distinctive red canopy and superb acoustics, and it hosts performances ranging from classical concerts to contemporary music. Sao Paulo is a city that's usually thought of as being a concrete landscape, and the construction of this park turned that perception around. Realizing how important it is to provide green spaces for locals and visitors, it embodies the spirit of Sao Paulo, reflecting the city's complexity, cultural diversity, and vibrant energy of its people. Number 6. The Grounds of Alexandria, Sydney, Australia The Grounds of Alexandria is a pioneering hospitality venue that's taken a different approach in regards to dining and socializing in an urban setting. Established in 2012 in a former industrial precinct, the grounds offer a unique blend of innovative cuisines, curious design, and a commitment to sustainable practices. On a site of just over an acre in size, the grounds of Alexandria is much more than an eatery. It's become a focal point of the community that includes a coffee roastery, a bakery, an organic garden, and an array of cafes and bars. The venue beautifully combines rustic charm with contemporary elegance, featuring reclaimed timber, exposed brick walls, and plenty of greenery that provides a lush garden-like atmosphere. Central to the concept of it is its commitment to sustainability and the farm-to-table philosophy. The on-site organic garden not only supplies fresh produce for the kitchen, but also serves as an educational space for visitors. The grounds also practices composting, water recycling, and supports local suppliers and artisans. The venue is renowned for its bustling atmosphere, particularly during the weekend markets, where visitors can browse a selection of homemade goods, fresh produce, and artisanal products. 
and it's also become popular too for hosting a variety of events and workshops throughout the year, including gardening classes, cooking demonstrations, and seasonal celebrations. It is a place where community, creativity, and sustainability meet, reinvigorating what was once a disused site. Number 5. Al Azhar Park, Cairo Opened in 2005, Al Azhar Park, which is in Cairo in Egypt, was developed by the Aga Khan Trust for culture over a massive garbage dump, which for centuries had accumulated on the historic Darasa site. It is a great example for how sites like these can be repurposed. Al Azhar Park is now a green oasis in one of the world's most densely populated cities, and it's become a sign of Cairo's shifting attitudes toward environmental rejuvenation and cultural revival. Covering approximately 74 acres, this park is known for its meticulously landscaped gardens, wide open spaces, and panoramic views of the city. Its design incorporates both Islamic landscape elements and modern ecological practices, creating a serene environment where visitors can actually escape the city life. Its lush gardens, water features, and well-manicured lawns are a great example of how landscape architecture can draw inspiration from historical ideas, in this case, the rich Islamic garden tradition. One of the most important things about the park is its role in the conservation and enhancement of Cairo's Islamic heritage. The development of this park led to the excavation and restoration of several important historical structures and walls that were previously buried under centuries of debris. This initiative has therefore not only improved the look of the area, but also provided valuable insights into Cairo's past, meaning the park is also a bridge between the city's historical legacy and its contemporary urban landscape. Open park spaces like these are few and far between in Cairo, and it plays a crucial role in improving the environmental quality of the area. It acts as a green lung for Cairo, helping to lower temperatures, filter pollution, and provide a habitat for biodiversity, which has, as a result, sparked a wider conversation about the importance of sustainable urban development and the need for more green spaces. Number 4. The Eden Project – Cornwall in the UK so, possibly one of the more surprising architectural ideas that you'll find that works hand-in-hand -hand with the surrounding landscape is the Eden Project, which was built in a reclaimed China clay pit in Cornwall in the UK. It's run by a global garden and educational charity that aims to make us think about our relationship with nature. It was opened in 2001 and has since become seen as a symbol of environmental responsibility, showcasing how abandoned and industrial landscapes can be transformed into vibrant ecosystems. The Eden Project's iconic biomes, which are huge structures made of durable plastic polymer, houses thousands of plant species from around the world. At the heart of the project are the two massive biomes. The Rainforest Biome, the largest indoor rainforest in the world, transports visitors into the heart of tropical regions, featuring everything from towering palms and exotic fruits to cascading waterfalls. The Mediterranean Biome, on the other hand, offers a journey through the landscapes of the Mediterranean, South Africa, California, and Western Australia, and it showcases plants adapted to dry conditions, providing the perfect surroundings to explore themes of adaptation and sustainable agriculture. Beyond the main biomes, the Eden Project's outdoor gardens flourish with native and global plants that thrive in Cornwall's mild climate. Here, you'll also find sculptures and art installations and educational displays that weave together stories of ecology, horticulture, and environmental sustainability. As a hub for education, research, and innovation, the Eden Project offers a wide range of workshops, courses, and community programs designed to inspire people of all ages to take action for the environment. While this certainly is an important cause at this time, there's no denying that the architecture of the project is one of the reasons it's been able to become so involved in worldwide environmentalism, with sustainability being paramount, featuring rainwater harvesting, renewable energy sources, waste reduction techniques, and the use of green building materials. The Eden Project it leads by example and proves that thoughtful designs can allow us to live in harmony with the natural world. Number 3. Parque Biblioteca España, Medellín, Colombia Parque Biblioteca España, which is in the Santa Domingo Savio neighborhood of the Medellín in Colombia, is an example of innovative public architecture. It's designed by renowned Colombian architect Giancarlo Manzani, and its impressive structure was completed in 2007 and quickly became a symbol of the transformation in Medellín a city once overrun by violence and which is now celebrated for its urban renewal and social innovation. The design of the Biblioteca is visually striking and thoughtfully integrated with its surroundings. 
Mazanti envisioned the complex as three massive geometric structures that resemble black stones or crystals emerging from the rugged terrain of the Andean mountainside. This concept not only blends the buildings with the natural environment, but also represents the resilience and solidity of the local community. The use of black slate on the exterior facades reinforces this imagery, while simultaneously setting a bold architectural statement. The library complex spans about 54,000 square feet and is organized into three main blocks, each dedicated to different functions and activities. The interior spaces are bathed in natural light, with large windows offering panoramic views of Medellin, further blurring the lines between indoor and outdoor. Mazzanti's design philosophies extend beyond just the aesthetics, with a huge focus on the social impact of architecture. Parque Biblioteca España is, as a result of this outlook, a multifunctional urban complex, and the overall layout encourages users to explore and interact, giving them a sense of ownership and belonging among the community members. While it is, of course, providing library access and social space to the community, the effects of this library are visible far beyond its perimeter. It became a catalyst for positive social change, originally providing a safe and welcoming space for learning, but now the entire city has benefited, proving just how impactful a well-planned redevelopment can be on the surrounding region. Number 2. Vitra Udolf Garden, Germany the Vitra Udolf Garden, located in the Vitra campus in Ville am Rhein, Germany, is an example of modern landscape design that seamlessly blends the artistry of horticulture with the principles of contemporary architecture and design. The garden was created by the renowned Dutch gardener Piet Udolf, who was celebrated for his pivotal role in the new perennial movement. His approach to garden design emphasizes the use of perennial plantings in a way that respects the natural life cycles of plants, creating landscapes that are sustainable, dynamic, and visually stunning throughout the seasons. Situated within the Vitra campus, the area is noted for its architectural diversity. The Udolf Garden adds a lush, organic contrast to the crisp lines of modern architecture. The garden was opened in June of 2020, making it one of the newer additions to the campus, and it covers an area of around 43,000 square feet. Being strategically positioned between the Vitra Schaudepot designed by Herzog and de Miron and the Vitra Design Museum by Frank Gehry, and therefore creating a continuous link between these landmarks. Piet Udolf's design for the garden incorporated his signature style of large, drift-like plantings that provide structure, texture, and color. The selection of plants was carefully curated to ensure year-round interest, with a particular focus on species that offer striking forms and textures. The garden's layout encourages visitors to meander through the space, with winding paths that invite exploration and contemplation, and it serves as a living exhibit of biodiversity and ecological gardening practices, demonstrating how designed landscapes can enhance architectural elements, while also supporting wildlife and promoting environmental sustainability. Number 1. Tongva Park, Santa Monica, United States Tongva Park, which can be found in the heart of Santa Monica, California, is an urban oasis that is another great example of the transformative power of innovative landscape architecture in revitalizing urban spaces. Covering an area of over six acres, this park, designed by the renowned landscape architectural firm James Corner Field Operations, opened to the public in 2013 and has since become a cherished green retreat for residents and visitors. Named after the indigenous Tongva people who have lived in the Los Angeles area for thousands of years, this park pays tributes to the area's original inhabitants through its thoughtful design and naturalistic landscapes. The park is divided into four main sections, Observation Hill, Discovery Hill, Garden Hill, and Gathering Hill, each of which offers unique features and landscapes. Observation Hill provides panoramic views of the Pacific Ocean and Santa Monica Pier, featuring a series of meandering paths and terraces that leads visitors through a diverse array of plantings. Discovery Hill is designed with children in mind, featuring a playground and interactive water features that encourage play and exploration. Garden Hill offers a more serene experience with a focus on botanical gardens that showcases native Californian plants and provide habitat for local wildlife. And the Gathering Hill is the social heart of the park, designed to accommodate community events, performances, and social interactions. Through the design of the park, you can see its commitment to sustainability. It incorporates sustainable water management practices, including bioswales and rain gardens that capture and filter stormwater, reducing runoff and promoting groundwater recharge. And even the selection of plants, most of which are drought tolerant and native to the region, minimizes the need for irrigation and maintenance. The James Corner Field Operations design philosophy emphasized the integration of the natural and built environments, and Tongva Park has approached it in its DNA. 
The park's layout and features are carefully designed to create a series of distinct yet interconnected spaces that encourage discovery and engagement with nature. The undulating landscapes inspired by the nearby coastline provide a dynamic and tactile experience, inviting visitors to interact with the environment in meaningful ways. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.